Hi, and welcome back to the Voices of Vic with me, Ben Ayton, and Mike Duffy. Uh, we're back midweek again to do another preview for the up and the coming game this weekend against Blackburn Rovers at Vicarage Road. Uh, it's going to be an interesting tie. We lost a reverse picture early on in the season, 2 0 in a midweek journey up to Ewood Park. It, it, was, a, it was a poor performance, uh, it was quite flat. Um, Jerry and Gakia went off with a hamstring injury as well, which you've got to laugh about because we've had so many of those this season. Um, but yeah, I think it was a game to forget. Um, I remember flying back from Mallorca that day, rushing back, um, hoping I'd come back and watch the game. Thankfully, mm. my plane was delayed three and a half hours and we got compensation for it and I ended up missing the Blackburn game. Um, so swings and roundabouts, really. Uh, but yeah, I say I'm joined with Mike. Um, we're also joined by a special guest again later on tonight. It worked last week. We're hoping it works again tonight and they turn up in there in the waiting room. And if they are, they will, we'll invite them in um, maybe 15 minutes into the show. Um, so we've got Ryan Hildred um, coming on from a Blackburn Rovers podcast. Um, so we're going to get his views on Blackburn Rovers season so far and get a score prediction. And we'll play that game again um, at the end of the show again where we... Um, test the knowledge of the opposition fan on past players that have played for both teams. Um, so that'll be interesting to see. Um, but yeah, Mike, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, shame about the result at the weekend, 2 nil up and drew 2-2. Two, two. I, I didn't watch it, so I, I don't know whether it was we threw away and we were poor and lucky to hang on in the end, or I don't know. But disappointing not to win. Um, but, you know, I, I saw that game as a bit of a banana skin. Um, unfortunately, my team lost in the semi-final 3-0. I was absolutely gutted. Um, but other than that, it's uh, it's all good. I, I'm, I'm quietly confident looking forward to this Blackburn Rovers game. So, um, fingers crossed we can get three points there. And, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying having opposition podcasts on again. It, it, it's like the old days in lockdown when we used to speak to opposition podcasts every week. So I'm looking forward to it, mate. Yeah, no, it, it's good to get back into a rhythm of doing it. Like you say, we both really enjoyed it um, during that lockdown season. So hopefully if time works out for both of us and we've got time available, we will bring this for everyone watching and listening. Uh, so fingers crossed there's more to come. Um, but yeah, um, I actually went to Vicarage Road Monday night and watched the under-18s uh, under play in the FA Youth Cup against Arsenal. Uh, they crashed out in a 4-2 defeat to Arsenal. But you know what? The boys can hold their heads up high. Um, they put in a shift. I was really pleased with the determination and the, just their strength and power and togetherness just to try and get an upset on the night. And and Arsenal couldn't cope with them early on. 10 minutes, 2 new up Watford. Started so strongly, counter-attacks, moved the ball quickly, catch Arsenal out and then 2-0 up. It was dreamland and I thought, bloody hell, I'm glad I've came tonight to witness this. Obviously, it was free for season ticket holders. They only opened up the Elton John stand, but there was queues getting into the Elton John stand when I was approaching Vicarage Road. And they did an attendance at the end of the game and there's 2,400 fans actually went to watch the game, which is fantastic. And that's going to do the, the boys a world of good seeing that they got that kind of support. So, yeah, hats off to everyone who turned up and supported the boys midweek. But, yeah, did lose 4-2. It was uh, Arsenal got about four goals within about 10 minutes. And it was it was a bit of a collapse from Watford, which was a, such a shame to see. It. But Arsenal second half, they just moved the ball quicker and Watford just couldn't handle it. I think after we conceded one um, goal, we made a change on the right-hand side. And I think Arsenal exploited that. Um, then they got two quick penalties, which went they scored from and then they got the fourth and we just couldn't really get back into it. Jack Greaves hit the crossbar in the 89th minute, which if that went in, it would have been game back on. But unfortunately, uh, we couldn't get back into it. But like I say earlier, boys can hold their head up high and there's there's a few stars in that team. I can tell you that now, uh, looking at that team and watching them, the, the standout guy for Watford, I thought, was the left back. And I think Harry Amos, um, I think he's only 15 years old as well. And my God, if he can perform like that at 15, what would he be like when he's 18, 19? Probably be um, playing for a bigger side but <laughs> than Watford. But um, 
he was very good. And uh, Michael A.D. Pokey as well, special mentor for him. He looks good. Um, so I'm excited for Watford's future with these youngsters. Um, but yeah, that's um, my quick review on the FA Youth Cup on Monday night. Um, we will jump straight into the news that came up from Watford today. And Watford confirmed their squad, uh, squad list for the remainder of the 2022-23 season in the Skybet Championship. So each club may register 25 first team players under the age of um over the age of 21 all under 21 players other than those on loan do not need to be named in the squad list to be eligible to participate in the league um so the registered players are daniel batman jeremy ngakia mario gaspar hamza chowdhury imran loser keenan davis tom cleverly ken semma hassan kamara craig kafkart henry arohu Brian Porteous, Ismail Assar, Tom Daly Basharu, Leonardo um, Bakuna, Ben Hamer, Christian Cabaselli, Samuel Kalu, Francisco Sirielta, Britta Sombalomba, uh, Maduka Okoye, Matthias Martins, Adu Kiembi and Wesley Hoot. Um, and then the under-21s players that have registered as well, uh, Jao Pedro, Ismail Kone, Jao Ferreira, Yeso Espria, James Morris, Michael A.D. Poku, um, Adrian Blake, Jack Greaves, Toby Adiemu, and Ryan Andrews. And there's also a note saying as well, all other under-21 players are also in, uh, also el eligible to play for the first team for the rest of the season. Mike, looking at that team straight away, it's about the, the people who have been left out. Obviously, Dan Goslin hasn't been included, but... There is a free spot in that 25. They only named 25 players. Uh, maybe there's a spot for him to maybe come in towards the end of the season or if injuries are bad, they can bring in a free agent to fill that gap. But the two people who missed out that maybe got eyebrows is, well, not really eyebrows. I think maybe we saw these coming, Mike. Courtney Horse, for starters, you're not surprised by him being missed out at all, are you? No, not at all. It, it's not worked out for him, which is a real shame because when he come in, there was so much promise around. And, you know, I I knew of him before, obviously. A lot of mates who support Aston Villa. And, you know, I remember Aston Villa in the Championship and uh, Courtney House was uh, was was a good good player for them back then as well. So I was really looking forward to seeing uh, him in a Watford shirt. I, think I saw him in a Watford shirt against R uh, Rotherham and wasn't up to a great deal that game, but I'm not going to judge him off that one game that I saw him live. So, yeah, real shame. Um, and, you know, it, it may have tarnished his reputation of Watford a little bit uh, or his his personal thoughts on Watford. But um, best luck to him in the future. I mean, I did get warned that he was made of glass and, you know, he, he, he did struggle with injuries. And... Um, I think it's a little bit cursed because uh, when Watford do, Charlie does the Watford Twitter spaces with a uh, with someone and then a uh, a player. I was on the one with Courtney Hawes before the Rotherham game, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that sums up my look. That does because he doesn't play for us anymore. So let's hope they don't get me on again. Or. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised they didn't get me on one with Raymond I as well. But uh, yeah, no, I'm gutted about Courtney, and yeah, hopefully we can be all right without him. Yeah, let's hope so. And you did mention him there, Raymond I. Um, he's not featured as well. I, I, there was rumours at the end of a transfer window that maybe they're looking for a move for him away from Vicarage Road. Obviously, that didn't materialise. So the next best thing was to terminate his contract. And Watford didn't mess about and they terminated his contract today. And that was, it was written on the bottom of the 25 players list. So they didn't even break it as news. They just put it in like a small print at the bottom, which I thought was quite funny. Um, and that small print is probably his contribution for a season as well. Because when he really came on, he's, he's, um, he, he was just useless, wasn't he? He was very lucky to get his one goal for Watford wasn't he, Mike? And that was in, we was both there. He's, he's got one goal in seven games and that was, he got his studs on to the end of a Ken Semmer shot that went in um, at St Andrews on that Tuesday night it, back in August. Um, you must be, 
just frustrated really with this Raymond I um, situation because obviously he's, he's came into Watford. He's been given the number nine shirt. He's performed the way he has, and then he's just been terminated. His contract's been terminated within six months. That just shows how much of a fiasco our summer transfer window has been, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, he, he, he don't look great, does he? Like you say as well, especially because he was given the number nine. There was maybe a bit of promise uh, being on the books at Barcelona as well. Uh, I think I remember a... Uh, a picture circulating of him in Barcelona training with uh, Lionel Messi. And uh, <laughs> that, that did make me laugh. And, you know, there, there was some promise, you know, we, we perhaps looked at him as someone that might be a bit, bit of a similar mould to Troy Deeney in the sense of get stuck in and does the dirty work. That, that's the only comparison I, I can say. And he didn't even do that. So <laughs> he, he looked like to, to be that sort of player that would be that rugged player come on, sort of be a bit of a battering ram, sort of roll his sleeves up, get stuck in, win flick-ons, that sort of player. But it wasn't to be. I mean, he 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 provided some great limbs away at Birmingham City and I'm thankful for that, even though we all thought it was Ken Simmer at the time, everyone in the ground did, uh, even the stadium announcer. But, um, yeah, it's just not worked. I mean, that game at Preston, I remember watching the whole game against Preston and my words, that's 90 minutes I'll never get back. He had another chance, <laughs> should have done a lot better with it. But, yeah, it, it is frustrating, you know. The, the waste all this time, you know, bring him in, you're paying his wages and it's for what, you know. He, he hasn't contrib he's, he's contributed a goal, which, yeah, OK, it's won us a point and we're a point better off than we would have been if we didn't sign him. But, uh, let's not forget, he, he missed pretty much an open goal. I can't remember who it was against now. Um, Whole city at home in that freezing cold. I think it was like minus two or something, wasn't it? That and was it, the know? attendance was poor that game as well because of the weather. But he, he actually went off injured as well. He came on as a yes. sub in maybe like the 70th minute, missed the sitter, and then went off with an injury. And it just summed up his career at Watford, really, didn't it? Pretty much. And. Like you say, it's just frustrating, you know. You, you'd like to think the Pozzo's doing their homework and behind the scenes. Obviously, this was pre-Manga and Costa. So, you know, there's no sort of... The, the blame doesn't lie at their door. But it just frustrates you when you see players come in and you think, oh, OK, he's been on Barcelona's books. Look at the last player that we had that was on Barcelona's books, De Feu. You know, maybe. And it just hasn't worked out at all. But do you know what? The one thing I will say is we've not stuck with him. At the first opportunity available, we've been able to, you know, um, terminate his contract. And a lot of people would have said, well, they could have terminated it any time. Yes, we could have done, but we've waited until after the January transfer window. We've brought in Britta Sombalonga. Um, we've got rid of Vacuum Bio as well. So, you know, they, they've obviously had a, a reshuffle. We've brought in a Rohu. So, now is the time, and now is the, the perfect time to get rid. And yes, we could have got rid of him before, but I think now bringing in who we brought in now was the right time. So fair play on for Watford for doing that because we've been guilty before of holding on to players longer than we should have done. Uh, and I know a lot of people will argue that we, we held on for Manoy too long because he wasn't very good, but I think this is a sensible time to get rid. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the new boys gel in. Yeah, would you maybe think that maybe Watford are looking to clear the Deadwood? Um, and he's obviously not um, he's not featuring even when he's fit. Um, maybe the same as Baku and Bio. He, he's been, that's another one from the transfer window in the summer as well that we've ended up uh, moving on as well. But do you reckon it's a case of maybe Watford, Ben Manga coming in and us reassessing the situation and getting rid of these deadwood players? Uh, I really hope so. Uh, we've needed it. Like We all said at the end of last season that we needed a massive, massive clear out because that was one of the worst seasons that I've certainly endured as a Watford fan. I know, you know, we, we've had some pretty tough times close to administration, but in terms of the footballing ability and football-wise, results-wise, that was certainly one of the worst. Um, that I can remember anyway. So a lot of people said, you know, we need a good clear out in the summer and we got rid of a few, but 
again, brought in some questionable players. So hopefully now that we've got Manga and Costa on the case, you know, they've brought in uh, another scout who we talked about a couple of weeks ago on a pod. So hopefully it's all good and we can start bringing in players um, that, that actually fit the system. I mean, look at Rob Edwards now at, at, at that team down the M1. You know, he's got mm. a team that suits his system, has got the players to suit his system, and unfortunately, it's working for him. Um, so, hopefully, Slav's having a word with him. Look, I want to play this. I need this player, this player, this player, and they can go and get him. I mean, I don't want to open a can of worms there because he has asked for a winger and a midfielder, which we didn't get. But hopefully... It's a gradual, slow process. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. So hopefully it's 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 a gradual process. Well, one thing I will say about the, the transfer window that Watford have done um, in this transfer window, the January one, is they have looked to get that average age of a squad down. And that was a massive thing a couple of years ago. We, we had a really ageing squad in the Premier League. I think it was the oldest squad in the Premier League. So they have brought that down massively with all the inclusion of all these younger players that we've brought. But they've also got the good mix of experience now with like Britta Sombalonga coming back in who, who knows the English game inside out and can give you goals. Um, so I will say hats off to Watford's recruitment this transfer window in January. Um, but yeah, I mentioned at the start of the show that we had a special guest lined up and it is Ryan Hildred um, from the Blackburn Rovers podcast. Um, he'll be coming in now just to give us a preview for the upcoming game at Vicarage Road on Saturday. Uh, just added him into a stream now. Brilliant. It's all works. All gone to plan. Ryan, how are you doing, mate? <laughs> Hi, lads. Yeah, good. Thank you. Uh, slight connection uh, problem a couple of minutes ago, but we're here now. I'm uh, out and about at the moment, so I'm not a murderer, I promise. I'm just sat in my car, <laughs> pulled over. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Well, at least you've pulled over and you're not kept continued driving. So, yeah, really appreciate you joining us to- tonight, um, Ryan. So, yeah, you're from the Inside Bro- um, Brockle podcast, which is a Blackburn Rovers podcast. Uh, so, yeah, wanted to get you on for your thoughts for this coming um, Saturday's game and just to get a feel of what's happened at Blackburn this season. Um, so, first things first, um, maybe we'll go back before the season and maybe a few seasons back what's the feeling amongst the Rovers supporters at the moment towards like the Benkies because obviously at the, the start of their tenure there was a lot of unrest and Rovers fans weren't very happy and I remember you was back in the Prem then weren't you under Sam Allardyce um, but since then have things got better under the Benkies? Um, I think that the ill feeling is always going to be there because, you know, the way that they did things and the manner of our relegation from the Premier League, you know, in such a short space of time hurts. Um, You know, it's still got some deep scars in the fan base there. But the only credit I think you can probably give Venkis at this stage is they keep writing the checks. They keep, you know, putting the money in to, you know, help us sign the odd player here and there. But, you know, as a fan, that is such a scary proposition to be because, you know, we are just... Avenki's getting bored away from being the next Bolton, being the next Portsmouth, being the next Berry. So that is such a precarious position to be in. So we kind of just sit there as fans, just hoping and praying that Venky somehow want to put all of this right. And it's taken them over 10 years so far to put it right. You know, we're probably no closer to the Premier League than we've ever been. Might take another 10 years. It might take another 20 years. And, you know, for us, we even need another rich owner to come in or we need Venky's not to get bored. So, um, the fans are still angry at Venkis. They always will be. But compared to some other clubs that are going through, you know, through some real financial difficulties at the moment, I guess we have to be a bit grateful that Venkis keep writing the checks. You just, just to obviously fast forward to how things are at the moment. You've got John Dahl Thomason as gaffer. How's uh, how's your season going so far? Would you say? It has been such a strange season, I must say. Um, You know, Tony Mowbray's time was up. Um, We thank Tony Mowbray for his time. You know, five years at Rovers, he did a great stint with us. We nearly made the playoffs a couple of times, but, um, you know, it was time for him to go. We was ready to go at that point. So we were all excited for the new manager. Um, I think Tony Mowbray was maybe a bit bored by the end of his tenure. You know, some of his interviews, he was just coming across as that lovely northern man that he is but he didn't really have like the zest to inspire this young squad thomason came in was saying all the right things doing all the right things we started the season like a house on fire didn't we and got ourselves into the top six completely unexpected um 
but we've had some shocking results this season and we've had some really worrying trends this season as well. Um, we've had away performances that have been as bad as I've ever seen from Rovers at this level since relegation from the Prem, since promotion from League One. We have been dreadful. I'm talking no shots on target, you know, uh, away at Rotherham. We lost 4-0 um, middle of January. We're one nil down at half time. We had no shots on target in the second half. I don't even think we had a shot in the second half. So we've had some performances like that, which are really bad. Um, if we go behind in games, we don't seem to come from behind. To be fair to Thomason, that was something that plagued Tony Mowbray as well. So there's clearly something psychological with the squad there. So there are those worrying things. And I think most Rovers fans will probably say we haven't quite worked out our style yet. What type of side are we? Thomason came in and said we'd be a pressing team. We're definitely not a pressing team. And if you watched our game against Wigan on Monday night, we are definitely not a pressing side. So there's a few things there that just send alarm bells ringing in the fan base. But if we just boil this down, no one expected us to be in playoff contention this season. We accepted it was going to be a season of transition. So hopefully we can just get a few results, maybe sneak in there if we can. And then who knows from that point. But I think... The thing that's probably plagued Thomason this season, I was saying this on our podcast earlier this week, if we'd been in 11th and 12th position and just flatlined a little bit, maybe with a bit of hope, and you know you can cling on to that as a fan, I actually think top, the view of Thomason would be better than what's happened, which is start the season like a house on fire and then collapse. I think that's going against him a little bit at the moment. Well, one thing that's going in his favour is obviously the, uh, your top goal scorer, Ben Britt and Diaz, he's nine goals this season. Could have lost him in January, but he's actually signed a pre-contract to sign for Villarreal at the end of the season. How vital was it for Blackburn Rovers to keep hold of him in January just in case for you to just try and sneak into those playoffs places? Yeah, that's it. So, um, you know, it's a, a game of stick or twist, that one, isn't it? So, you know, we're relying on Diaz to be the man to fire as the goal. So all chips are on the table at that point. That works if you get the performances out of Ben Brereton Diaz that he was doing earlier on this season. Um, again, the game against Wigan on Monday night, that's as bad as I've seen Brereton Diaz play um, for a long time. So if we've made this decision to keep him, we need the performances out of him. I've seen some silly things in the fan base about, you know, he's his head's not in it, he's given up already, all that type of stuff. That's not him. You know, he's a nice lad. He would never do that to us. I think he's just literally out of form. So when he's out of form, we need other players, you know, chipping in with goals and things like that. So, you know, you're going to be coming up against Diaz this weekend, who is not in form. He's not scored since the restart. Um, and I think he hadn't scored in a couple of games before the World Cup as well. So he's not in form at the moment. And, um, you know, if he's playing like he did on Monday night and ultimately if we don't make the top six, you know, as a completely objective view, you could look at that and think maybe we should have cashed in. Maybe we should have got a bit of money. Yeah, I mean, he'd give Ngakia the runaround in the reverse game. I've, I'm still having nightmares, let alone Ngakia. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you, you, you've mentioned a couple of times that game on Monday night against Wigan, the nil-nil. Um, I mean, it, it, it surprised a few of us because, you know, Wigan are, are, are having a horrendous time at the moment. What was the performance like? Was it just they sat back and defended or was it just, you know, you, you, you just couldn't break them down at all? Uh, the first thing I'll say is we're going to just Wigan as far as Rovers go. <laughs> um, you know, it's obviously, it's a local derby. They always cause us problems. They always do. They relegated us from the Premier League. So, you know, Wigan are just Wigan as far as we're concerned. They were down in League One with us. They won the league. We came seconds. So we've always had this thing with them. They then sat Colo Torre and you're like, ah, right, we go, new manager. Wigan come into Ewood. So I think before the game, some of us were probably thinking that Wigan might sneak a result and do those things. The problem we had on Monday night was, you know, Ewood's been a happy hunting ground for us this season, including against Watford, as you mentioned there. We just were not brave enough. We weren't proactive enough. We didn't go at Wigan. If I'm Thomason, I'm looking at Sean Maloney and his first big job, really, and I'm thinking, let's get an early goal. Let's make this difficult and let's make Sean Maloney panic and see what he's made of. But we were just passive. You know, we were happy for that game to coast in the first half. Probably thought we'll get the goal eventually, but I don't think we did enough to actually make it happen. So we didn't go at them. We didn't press them. You've probably seen all the stats around XG and other stuff this season. Rovers just do not create chances. And, you know, the only likelihood of scoring on Monday was Sorba Thomas putting some crosses in. We didn't have anything else, literally nothing else. So 
that's an issue. That's a problem. And that's ultimately why we're sliding down the table. Well, one step that I thought was very interesting until two games ago was you was the only side not to draw a game. Um, <laughs> 27 games into the season, not drawing one game. It's either you won them or you lost them. And now you've had back-to-back draws. So I do find that quite funny. Um, but yeah, your, your form lately, it's, it's not been great. As it, in the last six games, you've lost three, drawn two and won one. Uh, and in the form guide, you, you're actually 18th at the moment. Is that form worrying for the remainder of the season? Uh, it is worrying. I think, you know, we're probably, uh, touch wood, <laughs> clear enough of the relegation zone for it to become a problem in that sense. But, you know, statistics catch up with you in the end, don't they? And if we are the lowest side in terms of XG, if we're not having shots on target away from home, if we're not coming from behind in games, if we're drawing nil-nil at home uh, to bottom of the league, these things catch up with you. So, you know, we're, what, sixth, uh, we're seventh in the table now. You know, we could be looking at it that we're 11th next month and then next month 15th. And then you might be looking over your shoulder towards the end of the season. So with those underlying statistics, um, it is worrying. You know, it is absolutely worrying. And in recent weeks, we've been relying on Bradley Dack, who fair play to him, has got himself fit and firing and lean again. But, you know, where would we be if Bradley Dack hadn't found this form as well? So we need to do much, much more to, to threaten sides. And if we've got any ambitions of the top six, we have to do much more than that as well. Well, what what would you say the, the aim for the rest of the season is? Is it to try and get in the playoffs, like, or is it just consolidate mid table, or what 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 would the aim be? It has to be go for the top six. You know, I've heard Thomason say that you know no one had Rovers in the top six before the season. We're overachieving. Yes, those statements are true. But I look at it and I think. We've made the decision to keep Brereton Diaz because we think we're going to go for the top six. So you have to back that horse and we've done that. We're only a point outside the playoffs as it stands. We've not been in form recently. Actually, an upturn in form and finishing the season strongly might see us into the top six. So we've absolutely got to aim for top six. And I think fans will be disappointed if we don't make it this season just because we've been there for quite a long time. And I think it's just the manner of the results that we've had, you know, the not coming from behind, the three nils away from home, the collapse and the fall in the position. I think if if we don't come top half, that will definitely feel like a disappointment. If we don't at least look like we're going to bang the door down and have a go, I think fans will be disappointed. So we have to, we just have to go for top six, Mike. We definitely do. So you're looking forward to the trip to Vicarage Road on Saturday? I am. It's. Um, I've been waiting for this one. It's my first time to Vicarage Road, so um, right. I've. Uh, I think I'm up to seventy odd grounds following Rovers now. So um, it'll be another one to tick off, a new one, and it will get the championship recomplete for me. So uh, yeah. that'll be nice to tick that off, and um, yeah, it'll be good to go. It's. Um, it's an intriguing ground with you know the redevelopment and stuff that you've had. So I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like now. Well, if you if you're coming down for a few to drink, don't get any drink inside the away end because they don't have a license for it. So make sure you have plenty of drink outside the ground. Uh, so that's a little tip. I was going to tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you for the heads up. No problem at all. Um, so yeah, well, Watford aren't in great form themselves either. Uh, uh, lately, um, we've slipped down to fifth in the league now. Um, arch rivals, both slot up the M1, have overtaken us in the league with a game in hand now. Um, but yeah, I think we've won one game in the last four matches. Um, we threw away two goal lead at the weekend to Reading, so it, it's all up for grabs this weekend. Um, who would you say is Rovers maybe player of the season this season? Oh, that's a tough one because I think it's just been in portions of the season. So, um, you know, if you're going off, you know, who's the household name, you know, we've already mentioned him. Brereton Diaz on his day is the guy who's going to cause you the problems. He's got great dynamism. He's the one that can drive from that left-hand side and, you know, we can find a finish. But he's not been informed. So the man to watch, I think, is Bradley Dack. Um, you know, absolute respect for this player because, you know, he's had two ACL injuries and... He came back and he wasn't looking fit. You know, he was maybe looking a bit overweight. Uh, Yondal Thomason didn't have him in the squad. He was frustrated he wasn't in the squad. But fair play to Bradley Dack. He's worked hard and he looks as fit as I've ever seen him. As I say, he's looking in good physique. He's looking lean. He's getting in the box. He's being that fox in the box. Even though we're not creating the chances, he's there. He's pressing. He's trying his hardest. So Bradley Dack is definitely one to watch, particularly, you know, now we've got Sorba Thomas. So, but Thomas probably put more crosses into the box on Monday night against Wigan than we've seen from any player this season. So, Bradley Dack is probably the one to watch for you. A um, couple of shout-outs that 
that I will give, though, um, Thomas Kaminsky is injured at the moment. Um, so Ainsley Pears is in goal for us. Um, our fans have been nervous about the fact that Ainsley Pears has been in goal, but he had the run in the FA Cup. He played in the FL Cup as well, away at West Ham, and he's done all right, Ainsley Pears. And I think Kaminsky, when he comes back from injury, might not find it easy to get his place back. Um, the other man in form is uh, Joe Rankin Costello, and he's another intriguing one. Um, looked like he was going to go out on loan, um, but he's made right back his own at the moment, and he's playing really well for us down that right hand side. And, and we're looking forward to him linking up with Sorber Thomas down the right. So, yeah, they're the three for me. I think um, Rankin Costello, Bradley Dak, Ainsley Pears, they're the three to watch. I think based on current form. Yeah, well, I was going to mention about Kaminsky as well because I've been impressed with him whenever I've watched him this season. Uh, but yeah, like you say, Pierce has done well when he's came in. I think he's kept four clean sheets in seven games for you as well, which is really decent mm. for a, a second string goalkeeper as well. Um, but yeah, looking into the game for this weekend, you got a score prediction? <laughs> I, I always hate doing these things. I mean, <laughs> if we're going off the way that this season's gone, um, you know, we've been well beaten away at Burnley, well beaten away at Sheffield United. We've had some pretty bad away performances as well. I know that you've been patchy at home. Mm. I looked at your results and I've seen that. But I think Rovers are always that type of side that if you are in that patchy run of form, we're a good side to play against because we don't create the chances. We don't threaten sides. And actually, if Watford are on it on Saturday, I think you'll comfortably beat us. So I don't like predicting Rovers to lose. So just take my draw prediction as actually, I think we're going to lose, but I can't go on record as saying that we're going to lose. So I'll say a draw. I'll say a 1 1. We might see three draws in a row. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, Mike, ironic. What do you re- <laughs> Mike, what do you reckon the score would be this weekend? Let's have your score prediction. Well, I, to be honest, I've listened to what Ryan said and it's not too dissimilar with how some Watford fans would describe Watford at the moment. You know, we, we're all over the place and, you know, throwing a two-goal lead away against Reading, really disappointing. You know, we before Ryan come on, we talked about that nil-nil draw at home to Hall City. Um, only narrowly just beat Blackpool at home. Obviously got battered to Blackpool away as well. So, you know, it sounds very similar to us. I mean... Uh, it, it does sort of give me a little bit of hope that, that Ryan was saying that Rovers struggle to create chances, which, to be fair, I mean, we're hardly free scoring this season, but I like to think at home, you know, we, we do try and be a bit more on the front foot and a bit more dominant. So I'm going to say we're going to nick a 2-1 win, um, but I, I don't think it's going to be the, the prettiest game. I, I, I count my lucky stars that I'm not going to be able to watch it on Saturday because... It sounds like it could be a bit of an ugly, hairy game. But uh, listen, if we get a 2-1 win, I don't care how we do it. What about you, Ben? Yeah, no, yeah, no likewise. I don't care how we do it, but we need the three points. Our fixtures in um, this month is terrible. Our next couple of day, uh, games after yourself, Ryan, is um, away to Burnley, at home to West Brom, away to Sheffield United. So that's the three games after. So we really could do with three points against you. Um, so... I'm hoping for a Watford win. Um, I'll go for a 1-0 Watford win. Um, hopefully, maybe a Jal Pedro goal. Now he came off the bench last weekend, so hopefully he'll get more minutes in his legs. So hopefully, he'll pick up um, his scoring boots and provide the goods at the weekend. Um, but just quickly, Ryan, just before we let you go, um, thank you for joining us tonight, by the way. Um, we like to test the knowledge of the opposition fan when they come on. Um, and we want to test your knowledge about past players that have played for Watford and. Blackburn Rovers, can you any come to your mind that you can think of that have played for both sides during their career? Ooh, Watford and Rovers, that is a good one. Mm. I could be funny and say because we were linked with Ryan Porteous, I could. Uh... <laughs> I didn't want <laughs> to mention that. that one. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. That was a sickener for us because uh, we were after him. Are oh, you going to kill me? Aren't you? When you say who it actually is, I'm just scanning. Oh, Danny Graham, come on. Oh, yeah, I forgot about you. Yeah. Danny oh Graham. God, Mike. <laughs> I had one, yeah. and I completely forgot about Graham. See, I, I was looking earlier, and I could only find four, and I found it really difficult. So I don't think there's been many players that have actually played for both sides, but I was adamant that Mike was going to get Danny Graham, so I, I, that shocked no. me. My one was uh, Lee Williamson. Lee, Yeah, Lee Williamson. But yeah, that's, that's all I could one. think of. I, I, I drew a blank. I didn't even think of Graham. Any more boys, do you reckon, that you can think of? 
I can't. We must have when we were in the prem and you were in di- the old Div One. We must have loaned you someone. Mm. We must have done. But there's we've, a we've, we've, done the other, you. we've done the other way round. We've actually loaned you a player when we was in the prem and you was oh, in the championship. You. Um, 16 17 season. Ooh. What defender. position? Defender. Oh, um, not Tommy Hoban. No, oh, yeah. Right. Tommy, Tommy Hoban. Hoban yeah. Um, yeah. Went on to have 16 appearances for Rose, Rovers, scoring once. Um, and then, Big goal that one as well. New... Oh, was it? Yeah, it was um, because we obviously went down eventually, but we were playing Forest, who they were with us on the final day of the season. But he scored in a 1 0 away at Forest. Um, That was a big goal for us at the time. It was like March, April time as well. He was a good player. It's a shame that he got struck down by so many injuries, wasn't he? He Mm. just stumbled his career, went up to Scotland, and even got injured up there playing for Aberdeen as well. It's such a shame. I think, didn't he come back down, joined Crew, joined them for about a week or two, and then retired after during pre-season. I think so, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, that last one that I was alluding to, um, it, it was ages ago, late 80s, early 90s, but I'm mentioning it because he's a bit of a Rovers legend, Tim Sherwood. Oh, oh Tim yeah. Sherwood. Wow. I didn't, <laughs> started didn't realize at Watford, had 32 appearances, then went to Blackburn, won the Premier League. Love it. Good one to end on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll end it there. But yeah, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really do appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy your trip down to Watford on Saturday. Yeah, really looking forward to it. And thank you for having me on and uh, being patient with me sat in this car. <laughs> but uh, no, really appreciate it, guys. Thank you. I'm just glad just your windows aren't steamed up. I know, I'm doing all right so far, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Cheers, Ryan. Yeah, so thank you, everyone, for watching tonight. And if you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I'll be back at the weekend to give a review of the Blackburn Rovers game. Uh, stay safe, everyone, and come on, you ones. <laughs>